In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, glory be to him forever. Amen. I want to thank the deacons for this amazing veneration. I haven't heard the type Parsenos and all these beautiful things in a long time. God bless you. God bless you. Um, today's talk is about peace. And when we talk about peace, we can't go past St. Mary as the perfect example of someone who had the perfect inner peace. And she lived it. She didn't talk about it. She didn't preach it. But she lived it. It's very important to understand what it means to have peace because some people understand that peace have different meanings. Peace is not to run away from a problem. Peace is not to avoid a problem. Peace is not to turn a blind eye to a problem or a tribulation or anything that we're going through. But peace is to be aware exactly of what's happening around us, the significance of the situation that we're going through, without avoiding it, but having complete stillness in our heart, knowing and trusting that everything is in the hands of the Lord which is very difficult sometimes. Some people think that peace is basically just avoiding someone or avoiding a situation. This is not peace at all. Because this is the most common understanding. I'll have peace with someone, so I'll just avoid talking to them, I'll avoid seeing them, I'll avoid... Even in, in some of the marriages that we see, people can be married for 15, 20 years, and they talk to each other and they just keep the peace in the house. It reminded me one day, I told Tasoni, we need a holiday, we need a break. She said, great. I said, where do you want to go? She said, Bali. I said, great idea. I'm going to Fiji. <laughs> just to keep the peace. <laughs> this is the kind of peace that some people can look for, avoiding, but no. Because peace has a very, very important condition. That, you has, that it's important that you live in the communal life. We have to love each other. And we have to have the real peace that's from the heart. It's not just something that we pretend to live, something that we just show on the outside, but we don't have it on the inside. Many people can show that they are composed in a problem or they're very composed through a very difficult situation, but deep down, they could be panicking, and that's not peace. It's not what you show on the outside, it's what you live in the inside. St. Mary was a very good example of this because she knew exactly what she was going into and she was going through. When the angel told her, you're going to be the mother of God and you're going to give birth, the first thing that came to her mind is, how can that happen and I don't know a man? She knew that this was such a big thing. And she understood very clearly the law that if she was to be found pregnant, that the only thing that would happen to her is that she would get stoned to death. But she was not panicking about it. She surrendered completely to the Lord, knowing the significance of the problem, but knowing that he who gave her this grace will deal with the problem. It's something very important that we need to understand that Surrendering to God is basically the way we show that we have peace. Knowing the problem, but knowing that it is in God's hands, that is to have peace. I read a beautiful story about a cruise. Some, some people were like, um, if you look at the blogs and stuff like that, and one of the blogs was very interesting. It was about a Christian couple that went um, on a cruise and for some reason the, the ship broke down and there was a storm passing by. So to have a ship, basically the engine's not working in the middle of a storm, it's such a, a serious situation. So everyone, all the alarm bells went off and everyone went to their stations, everyone put the life jackets on and there was this man 
who was really, really moving very calmly, very slowly, and his wife was in a complete panic state. And he was so composed to the extent that she got really angry at him. She said, do you have no feelings? Like, do you not understand the situation? We're dying here. So he looked at her, he smiled, and then he grabbed a knife. And then he put the knife to her neck. Don't try this at home. And he said to her, are you scared of me? She said, no. He said to her, are you scared of the knife? She said, no, because I know it's in your hands, and I know that you love me and you never hurt me. He said to her, I too believe that the storm is the knife in God's hands. It shall not hurt me. This is peace. This is peace. He was understanding. He put on his life jacket. He understood the situation. He understood the danger he was in. Yet, he also had faith that my life is in the hands of the Lord, not in the hands of the storm. Do you get the point? So peace is not to be ignorant of the problem, not to ignore the problem, not to turn the blind eye to the problem, but to be aware of the significance of the problem and interact with it. Whether you become sad, angry, or experience any of the emotions that we as humans experience, yet we do have this faith in our heart that I am in his hands. Before that passed away, about three months before he passed away, I sat with him on the bed, and we knew that he, he was not well, like he was not going to be around for a long time, and, and, and for some reason the topic of, of death came about, and when people hear about death, they panic and, and they lose their peace. And then I looked at Dad and I said, Dad, are you worried, are you scared? And he goes to me, no. And I said, why? He said, listen, I know one thing. I am a father, and you are my son. And I would never, ever do anything to hurt you. And I also know that I am his son. And as my father, he would never do anything to hurt me. So whatever happens, I am in his hands. Peace. Peace. He was at peace with the, 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 the medical condition he was going through. He was at peace with what's going to happen. He was at peace with everything. And this is basically the peace that we as Christians need to live, especially in the world we live in today. So how do I live this peace? How do I get to this stage when I don't panic? How do I get to this stage where I'm not worried about this meeting tomorrow with my boss? You know, when you all have been called to a meeting with the manager and you sleep all night, or when you go into an interview and you stay all night, you're up all night rehearsing the interview in your own mind, and sometimes deciding that you already didn't do well and you wake up in the morning not wanting to go because it didn't go well in your own mind. How do I get rid of all these things? Without talking too much, because peace has many aspects to it, we need to believe in three pillars that we can build our faith and our peace upon. And the first one is that God... God is the Pantocrator. You know what's the translation of Pantocrator? What's Pantocrator? It's not Almighty, by the way. For some reason, we translate it as Almighty, but Pantocrator means the controller of all. Dabit al kul. Dabit al kul. That's to believe in God's sovereignty, to believe that He has absolute authority over everything. Over everything. This is your God. This is your Lord. The one who has absolute authority over everything. What does that mean? It means that when even things go wrong and there is chaos, this chaos and these situations that are going from bad to worse, they are still within his control. And he is allowing it within his control. And he has set limits to how far this problem or that situation can go wrong. He definitely has everything in his hands. You need to believe that with all your heart. 
You might tell me, but there are lots of evil in the world. There are lots of things happening. He is allowing it, but to a limit. Remember the book of Job when, when the Satan used to go to him and say, your servant Job is this, this, and I'm going to do that to him. And the Lord said to him, all right, go and do it. Before every time he tested Job, he went and had permission from the Lord, right? And the Lord gave him limits. He said, fine, go. But these are your limits. You don't touch his soul. You want to touch his body? Do it. You want to take his richness? Take it. You want to do this? Take it. However, I am setting limits to how much he can test my son. And that's what you need to trust in. That no matter how bad things can get, I am at peace and I have peace in my heart because I know that he has set limits to how awful and how terrible things can get. And no matter how many people try to hurt you, the Lord has set limits. What are these limits based on? It's based on how much you will learn from that experience and how much you will grow after going through this experience. Saint Theophan is so beautiful. If you read his books about the uh, noetic war, uh, wars and the spiritual warfare, he, he, he says sometimes the Lord, because of his love for you, he would allow things to happen. For example, if the Lord wants to teach you that you are nothing and you need him, how will he teach you that? He said he might put you in a situation where you become all of a sudden hated by every single person around you, despised by every single person around you. He would allow that to happen, but for a time. For a time. He says the Lord lets this happen because the grace can never help anyone who is not in need of help of the grace. Meaning, if I can handle it on my own, then the grace will let you hang it on your own. If you believe that you're strong enough to handle the situation, then the grace will leave you. It's impossible. It's impossible for the grace to work with someone who does not need help and does not acknowledge that they need help. So the Lord, the Lord allows the tribulation to happen so he can actually admit that, Lord, I am nothing. I am nothing. As we always say, I am a zero. What's a zero worth? Nothing. But you put that zero next to the one, and it becomes a perfect A, 10. That's what it is. And sometimes the Lord wants to teach us that lesson, so he allows the tribulations and he allows the difficult times to come. However, have peace because he has set limits to how much you can be tested, and it is for your own benefit to grow. Sometimes you might say, Lord, it's too much. I've had enough. I am tired. How can I keep my peace if I'm going from bad to worse? You have to trust in his wisdom and you have to trust in his timing. That's the only way you can have peace. The Lord does not enjoy you being suffering, like he does not enjoy you going through a problem or suffering from that pro problem. He's actually allowing it just for you to grow and to have faith and to have patience. I remember um, a lesson that I learned. We, we were going to Egypt. And we, uh, before we traveled, we, had, we went into, like, to get advice from the doctors about what injections to get when you go into Egypt. And it was very simple, just everything. <laughs> everything. So the kids, they were six, four, and two. And Tasoni said to me, listen, for each of those kids to have three injections in the one go, it's very difficult, and I cannot see my kids going through that pain. So you take them in, and I said, I, 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 can't, I can't see my kids in pain, so you take, you take them in. So we stood there, like, it's very difficult for, for, a, for a father or a mother to see their kids in pain. It's actually very difficult. It's, it's, it breaks your heart. And uh, we stood like for a good 45 minutes, not knowing what to do, we just froze. Like, I, I, I can't see them suffering and she can't see them going through that pain. So I told the kids, listen, this is totally up to you. Mind me, this is a 40-year-old man talking to a six-year-old. <laughs> 
it's, up, it's up to you. If you want to go in, you can go in. But it's going to hurt a little bit. And I can't see you crying. I can't see you crying. It, it hurts me. <laughs> so um, we started to go from by the age. So Angela was the first victim. <laughs> and I could see she's holding the tears in. Like, some of the injections are actually very painful, especially the tetanus ones. If, uh, they're quite painful because it's oily and stays in the muscle and you have to, yeah, it's very difficult. So that went okay. She was very strong. George had no issues whatsoever. And then Chris, we came in, the first injection, and I could see him, like, from a big smile to just uh, a face that is shocked. Like, really? There are two more of this? <laughs> and then the second one, he was just holding it in. And then the third one, he looked at me, and he was in pain. And he had tears in his eyes. And he said, Dad, I'm not going to cry. At this moment, I started crying. <laughs> and the doctor goes to me, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> My kid is in pain, and I'm not okay with that. But I went out of this, and I talked to the son, and I said, God taught me a beautiful lesson. Imagine us, the humans, the sinners, have so much compassion on our kids when they were just getting injections for their own benefit. Can you imagine what God goes through when we are going through a tribulation or through a difficulty and we are crying to him and saying, I am in pain. He is the source of feelings. He is the source of compassion. He is the source of love. Can you imagine what he would do to us and how he feels towards us going through all this? So it was actually an amazing lesson that I will never forget in my life. So whenever you're going through a difficult time, please just stop for a second and say, the Lord has supreme and absolute authority over all. He knows when to start and when to stop. Rabbina knows what he's doing. Every time you go through a difficult situation that you don't know how to keep your peace in that situation, just remind yourself of this. Rabbina knows what he's doing. Okay? So he's the controller of all. So this is the first pillar. The second pillar is... Rabbina is all-powerful. Your God is all-powerful. Remember that song? My God is so strong. Hmm? I used to hear the kids singing it. He's so strong. He's so powerful. But there's one problem here. The only thing that's standing between you and God's power to be executed in your own life is you is your faith. Sometimes you think that he's not going to do anything about it. Sometimes you think he's not listening. Sometimes you even think that he does not care. But God is so powerful. One day, the Midianites decided to go to war with the um, Israelites. So they marched 135,000 soldiers towards Israel. So the Lord appears to Gideon, Gideon, there's a war coming towards you, but don't worry, I'll save you. Put an army together. So Gideon gets up, and then he gathers everyone. Guess how many people he gets on his side? Now remember how many people are coming against him? 135,000. Can you imagine that number? Now Gideon, with all his works and, and hyping the people up and everything, he gathered 32,000. What's the ratio? Very difficult, Mishkeda. And then the Lord talks to him and says, Gideon, listen, I appreciate what you've done, but this is too much. I can't have so many people going to war. <laughs> what do you mean, Lord? He said, if you win with so many people, Israel will say that I delivered like I did not deliver the Midianites into your hands. Do you think that you won with your own efforts? And they will not believe in my salvation. So that's too much. Get rid of some of them. What do I do? He said, get up on the hill and say to everyone, if you are so scared and terrified, just go back to your homes. So Gideon got up. And then he said, if you are scared, if you're terrified, leave now and go back to your houses. Guess how many people went back? 
22,000. Left him with 10,000 people against 135,000. There's no ratio here. That, that can never happen. <laughs> and the Lord said to him, well, Gideon, that's still a bit too many for me. <laughs> I need to save you as less. So what do I do, Lord? Take him down to the river. Take them down to the river. What are we going to do with them? Those who are going to go straight with their faces and drink the water like lap, like a dog, that's exactly how it was described in Judges 7, keep them aside. And the fluffy ones who are going to go to their knees and get the water with their hands and clean the water before they drink it, those ones tell them to go back home. So how many knelt down on their knees, went down on their knees and, and picked up the water? 700. Those went home. How many were left? 300. Against how many? 135,000. And the Lord gave Gideon the most beautiful plan, and they executed the plan. And the Lord turned, actually, the, the enemies, they turned them against each other because they had such a beautiful plan that made the, the Midianites panic, and they started killing each other. And he wiped out 135,000 people without the Israelites having to actually raise one sword. As a matter of fact, they didn't have any swords. They had an empty vessel, and they had a trumpet <laughs> and a torch inside the vessel. That, that was the plan. Where are the swords? No swords. So great. So you're taking me to war with 300 people with an empty vessel with a torch inside it and a trumpet. Beautiful. So this is your Lord. This is your God. And in another situation, when they were surrounded by 185,000 at the time of Isaiah, the Lord also got rid of them. And one angel was able to destroy the enemy. This is your God. This is how powerful he is. This is the God that's protecting you and looking after you. No matter what happens around you and no matter how the devil tries to make you doubt this is how strong your God is. And you should always say that to yourself. I know who my Lord is. I know who my God is. I know how powerful he is. And I trust in his power. Because the only thing that's standing between you and this power is you. And your lack of faith and your doubt. So the first one, you need to believe with all your heart and live it. Don't just say it to yourself, but live it. That God is the controller of all, the Pantocrator, the P Pantocrator, the controller of all. Sovereignty, absolute power and authority over everything. My God is all powerful. All powerful. There are so many stories that we can talk and, and say and, and tell you about the power of God and how powerful He is in our lives. And then finally, your God is all wise. Who is the source of wisdom in this world? God. If you want to actually see the wisdom of God, you know the story of Joseph, right? Everyone knows the story of Joseph? We all know it? Let's tell it backwards. Let's tell the story of Joseph backwards. Starting by the fact that God knew that there was going to be a great famine that was going to be fatal for so many people. It's going to basically wipe out nations. So he had to put someone in a situation to help the people of Israel so the famine does not destroy or wipe out the race of Israel. Who is this one person? Joseph. So the Lord had to make Joseph become the first man in the most powerful nation on the face of earth at this time. What do I need to do in order for that to happen? I need to arrange a meeting between Joseph and Pharaoh, it's impossible. To you and to me, it's impossible. But for the Lord, no, there is a plan. And there's a very wise plan for that to happen. In order to make Joseph meet Pharaoh, I'm going to let Joseph be friends with two of the closest people to Pharaoh. And then they will tell him, one of them will tell Pharaoh about Joseph. How will that happen? I just need to arrange a meeting between Joseph and those two people. Where? Perfect place, prison. 
So I'm going to get those two in trouble. I'm going to get Joseph in trouble. And the timing has to be arranged perfectly so they can meet in prison and they can live together for three years. He, they, they can tell him about their dreams and he, they can see that he has this talent of interpreting this, the dreams. And then when they are released and they're close to Pharaoh, they can tell him about Joseph and that can happen. But how do I get him to prison in Egypt? And in this particular prison, which is a very tough prison, that is, it's considered a federal prison in Egypt at the time because it's for those who commit like really big crimes against authority in Egypt. Well, I have to get Joseph to do something wrong or to be accused of something wrong in order to go to that particular prison. Yeah. Okay, so what are you going to do? I'm going to get the woman of someone who is very important to accuse him falsely of something that he didn't do. Okay, so how will you get him to meet the woman? I am going to get him to be sold to her as a slave. How will you do that? I am going to get his brothers to decide to kill him. And then one of them is going to say, no, let's not kill him. Let's sell him as a slave. But in order to that to happen, I have to do something else. I have to make them jealous. So I, I will allow Jacob to make him a special colorful robe so they can get jealous. I'll give him a couple of dreams and I'll tell him how great he will be. Can you see how, how the story is building? It's like, you know, a Lego thing when you undo the Lego <laughs> and you know exactly how everything is, is built? It's amazing. Amazing. It's a very well executed plan over 15 years. 15 years it took from the moment they sold him as a slave to the moment they bowed before him and the dream became true that the Lord gave him. This is your Lord. This is your God. And through Joseph, he was able to save the people of Israel by getting them all to travel and live in Egypt. And he got Joseph to prepare for the famine and he got everything ready for them and they lived a very happy life. And then again, in his wisdom, when the famine was over, when everything was over and it was time for them to go back, the Lord arranged again another plan for them to leave Egypt and for Moses to lead them outside of Egypt and to go back. This is your God. He's full of wisdom. He's very powerful. He's the controller of all. Actually, another point to, to, to show how, how God is in control of all the situations, I just thought about it now. Moses, at the time, at the time that Moses was saved, he was saved and he found shelter at the very same house of the man who gave the order to kill all the children. Who can believe this? Who can believe this? How can I not have peace when I know that this is my Lord, my God? The one, the one who allowed Moses to be saved by the very same man who ordered his killing. This is your amazing God. This is the God we need to live with and live through and live for. Not to tell his stories, but to actually experience them in our life. So the most important things that you need to do is build your faith in God on these three important pillars. God is the controller of all. God is all powerful. He's the almighty. God is all wise. Now, if you have this as a friend, not as a God. If you have this as a friend, if you have this as someone who is always by your side, as a father or as a mother or as a relative or someone who's always there for you and he has those three things in him, how would you feel? Peaceful or you'll be worried? I'll feel peaceful. If I have someone who's that wise, who's that powerful, who's that sovereign, like it's amazing then nothing can shake me. Nothing can cause me to lose my peace and fear anything that comes towards me. So what takes away that feeling of peace from my heart? In all honesty, and it's, it's very simple, and it's the sin. The sin has a devastating effect on us as human beings. The first thing is that the sin makes you feel guilty 
and it makes you feel afraid. So through the sin, we basically are always feeling guilty, so the Lord is not going to look after me because I've done such a horrible thing, so he's not going to stand by myself. I've been such a bad person. All these, by the way, are things that are not true. But you can't help but think that this is what's happening to me because I haven't been a good person. I haven't been a righteous person. So obviously the Lord is not going to look after me. This is totally wrong. As a matter of fact, when you are a sinner, but don't take this as an excuse to be a sinner, when you are a sinner, the, the Lord looks after you more than when you are a righteous person for a short period of time. I'll tell you a story about uh, St. Samuel the Confessor. One day he felt very sick and the monks decided to take him from the monastery to the city to see a doctor. And he was saying, no, I don't want to go. The Lord will heal me. And, he, and they insisted and they carried St. Samuel. And on the way, they went past a monk and this monk had a very bad reputation that he was a sinner. And St. Samuel stopped the monks and he said, okay, just let this monk pray for me and I'll be okay. And they all looked at him and he said, don't you know who he is? He's a sinner. He said, just please let him pray for me. And he went to him. Now, as the abbot and the father of all monks at this area, the, the monk was shocked. He said, don't you know who I am? How do you ask me to pray for you? He said, just please pray for me. And he prayed for him. And to their shock, he was healed straight away. He was up on his feet and he walked back with them. So when they walked back to the monastery, they said to him, Abba, how did this happen? Like, we all prayed and we all have been praying for you. Why is it that when that sinner asked the Lord for you, that the Lord answered him straight away? And he said to them, because the Lord wants us all to have hope. And for the sinner... The Lord wants to give him hope that he is still heard, that his prayers are heard in heaven. So he didn't want to cut this line of connection. So he had to show him that his prayers are answered. He had to give him hope that there is still a chance for you to come back and repent. I'm still listening to you. I still love you. And that's why I asked him to pray for me. Similarly, when you have two kids and one of them is sick and has a temperature and the other one is up and running, who would you look after more? The sick person, the sick kid. That's the one that gets all your attention until he feels better. And that's the same with us as sinners. When we fall, we become the focus of Rabbina and the focus of heavens until we are healed from the sin. So if you fall... If you fall and you find that your lack of peace is related to a sin, it's always that way. And the more you fall into that sin, the more you will feel that you have no peace and you're very short-fused and you, you can't take anyone saying anything to you and you respond quickly and you respond aggressively. And this is all because you feel rejected. You feel that the Lord is not listening to me. The Lord has rejected me because of my sin. So you've lost your peace on the inside. So you cannot have peace on the outside with anyone around you. Peace is a three-way thing. Your peace with God, your peace with yourself, your peace with others. They all reflected on each other. So that's the first thing, the feeling of guilt. The second thing is fear. When I am not in a state of constant repentance... I am in a state of constant fear for the same reason that the Lord is not going to support me. This wrong idea that takes over our minds. You see, Adam, when God created our mother Eve, Adam came up with the first poem in the history of mankind. He was so fascinated by her, was so happy. He said, she is flesh of my eh. He expressed his love openly in such a beautiful verse. And then, and then, when he ate from the fruit, like from the tree, what happened? Like a couple of days ago, you were saying that she's part of you, that she, you love her, and that you were so grateful for her. But as soon as he fell, he felt so scared, 
And Adam, what have you done? He pointed his finger and said, she gave me. <laughs> Why do we point finger at each other? Why do we blame each other? Because we're scared. We want to basically project the problem or like shift the problem into someone else. So we point fingers straight away. That's because we're scared. And fear is one of the most important things that takes away. And that's, it's a critical factor, actually. If there is nothing, if there is nothing to fear in your life, then you'll have complete peace. And if you have constant repentance every day, every night, even the intention, even the intention that you're trying, that's enough for the Lord. That's enough for Him to work with you. And that's enough for Him to grant you peace. So in order to actually reach that stage of being completely peaceful, you have to fix that relationship with God. Start by having peace with heavens. And then have peace with yourself. Accept yourself as you are. Accept your faults, accept your mistakes, accept every, everything that happens. And then automatically you'll have peace with everything around you, even in the most difficult situations. But I need you to go back and remember those three things. God is in control. Even when there is chaos and things go from bad to worse, they are still within his limits. Number two, he's almighty, he's all-powerful, and he can save. Number three, he's wise in his ways and in his timing. Glory be to him forever. Amen. Any questions for Abuna Seraphim? I think you made them all at peace, Abuna. They're all at peace. Now, now we have to admit this beautiful, beautiful talk and beautiful, really gave us peace and gave us the feeling that, as Abuna said, that God's in control. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Thank you so much, Abuna Seraphim, for encouraging us these beautiful words. And um, God willing, we're continuing the revival the next english revival will be on friday night and we'll have abu namazes with us uh, to continue the theme for us um, and now we'll do we'll pray together the midnight hour please Our the children of the Lord, to praise the Lord of hosts, they may grant the salvation of our souls when we stand the flesh before you. Take away from our minds the sleep of forgetfulness. Grant us the Lord, so Lord, and let them understand how to stand up before a time of prayer and send up the appropriate doxology and win the forgiveness of our many sins. Behold, bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the course of the house of our God. In the last lift up your hands, you saints, and bless the Lord. The Lord shall bless you out of Zion. He who made heaven and earth. And let my supplication come to before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my petition come before you. Revive me according to your word. Let my lips flow with praise when you have taught me ordinances. Let my tongue speak of your words, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be for saving me, for I have desired your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your laws by meditation. My soul shall live and praise you, and your judgment shall help me. I have grown astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of all ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
from now until the age of all ages. Amen. Glory be to you, the good one, lover of mankind, help to you, Mother the Virgin, and to all you saints. Glory be to you, all the Trinity, have mercy upon us. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered, and let all who hate his holy name flee before his face. But let your people be a blessing, thousands, thousands, and thousand times ten thousands. Do you will, O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. And the second service of the midnight hours offered to Christ the King of God, beseeching to give our sins from the sons our teachers of the prophet and king. May his blessing us all. Amen. Can we pray together? Psalm 121. I was glad for those who said to me, We will go into the house of the Lord. Our feet stood in the course of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is built as a city that is closely compacted together. For there the tribes went up, the tribes of the Lord, the testimony for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones for judgment, even thrones for the house of David. As for the things which are for the peace of Jerusalem, and for prosperity to those who love you. Let peace be within your strength, and prosperity is your heavy towers. For the sake of my brethren and my companions, I have indeed spoken peace concerning you, because of the house of the Lord our God. I have done and she sought good things for you. Alleluia. Look, so I just want to read from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. May his blessing be with us. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went unto the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat to eat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touched him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, Master, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will he love more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave more. And he said unto him, You have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered into your house. He you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with the t with t with she has washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. He gave me no kiss for this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said unto her, Your sins are forgiven. And, he, and those who sat to eat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this who forgives sins also? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Glory be to God forever. Amen. And give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears, as you gave in the past a sinful woman. Make me worthy to wash your feet, which liberated me from the path of straying, and to offer your precious fragrant oil, and gain through repentance a pure life, so that I may hear that voice full of joy, your faith has saved you. When I realize my many wicked deeds and the thought of that awesome judgment comes to my heart, I tremble, takes hold of you, and I take refuge in you, O God, the lover of mankind. So do not turn away your face from me. I entreat you, our Lord, now without sin. Grant humbleness to my poor soul before the end comes and save me.
The heavens bless you, full of grace, the bride who is never married. And we too glorify your comprehensible giving birth, O Theotokos, the mother of mercy and salvation, intercede for the salvation of our souls. O Holy King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places and fills all the treasury of good things, and the Life Giver, graciously come and dwell in us and purify us from all defilement. O Good One and Savior, our souls. Just as you were with your disciples, O Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us, and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. O Theol, to cause you are the gate of heaven, open for us the gate of mercy. O Lord, hear us and have mercy on us, forgive our sins, amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. 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 Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, Father of God, O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord God of heaven, be with us. We have no help in hardship, tribulation, but you absolve, forgive, and meet our God of transgressions. Those which have committed willingly, those which have committed unknowingly, those which have committed knowingly, and those which have committed unknowingly, the hidden manifest. O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your name, which is called upon us. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. You will stay our daily bread, and you will serve us. As we forgive our trespasses, leave us in temptation, but deliver us from Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thy kingdom be found good. O Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, the living and eternal Son of God, light in our minds, understand your love-giving words, raise us up from the darkness of sin, and retrieve us the soul. Make us worthy to become our part in good deeds, Time, come and judge of all. Make us worthy of hearing that voice full of joy, saying, Come to me, blessed my Father, and hear the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Yes, Lord, grant us the hour to be without fear, anxiety, or condemnation. Do not judge us according to our many iniquities. You alone are compassion, long suffering, and exceedingly merciful. We ask this with the session of Alan, the author of course, Saint Mary, the session of the choir of Satan. Have mercy on us, O God, and have mercy on us. For at all times and every hour, in heaven and earth, is worship and glorified. Christ our God, the good, the long suffering, the abundant mercy, and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners, of whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner, but rather that he returns and lives, who calls all salvation for the promise of good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and every hour. He is our life and God us to fulfill the commandment. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive our sins, deliver us from every evil, grief, and distress of heart. Surround us by your holy angels, that by the camp we may be God and God, and tend thee to your faith and knowledge. O oh Lord, hear us pray, thank thee, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as you give the trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. So Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now I've got the Father, grace is only begotten Son, our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thy gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit with you all go in peace, and the peace will be with you. See you on Friday night, God willing.